Hi, this is Keith Townsend again of VirtualizedGeek.com with another training video on virtualization. So in the last class, we talked about the different types of virtualization, specifically terminal services-based virtualization and x86 virtualization. In x86 virtualization, we talked about two types of x86 hypervisors. Type 1 hypervisors being VMware vSphere, and uh, Hyper-V is examples of type 1 hypervisors that we gave. And type 2, which we'll focus on in this class, being VMware Workstation, VirtualBox, and a slew of others such as KVM that can be installed on Linux. Today we'll talk about VMware Workstation, so we'll get a pretty good overview of what an actual virtual machine really looks like in production. We'll take a look at a virtual machine that I had built before. It's a Windows XP virtual machine that I use for some backwards compatibility testing, which is a really great use case for client-based virtualization, which is what uh, type two hypervisors are commonly referred to sometimes. So we'll go ahead and take a look at our Windows XP uh, virtual machine. We'll look at the settings. Uh, we'll boot the machine up, take a look at the uh, virtual hardware that's presented to the virtual machine, and really get a good little deep dive into what a virtual machine looks like from uh, a logical sense and a practical sense as well. So looking at our Windows XP machine, we're going to right click on it. We're going to go to it, right, right click, go to settings. And we see this is a pretty typical uh, machine that would be running XP. We have one gig of memory, a single processor, a 40 gig hard drive, a CD-ROM drive, a floppy drive, uh, a network adapter. It also has a USB controller, a sound card, a printer, pass through for my local printer, and of course a video card. We'll go ahead and power up this virtual machine. And this error message or warning actually is I made a copy of this virtual machine specifically for this video. And VMware Workstation recognizes that this hasn't been powered up on my particular machine. One of the great things about virtualization is that you can make your virtual machines extremely portable. So once you've spent some time in creating a virtual machine, it's basically a set of configuration files and, and a hard disk file. And that machine, that virtual machine can be copied to any other directory or computer that runs a compatible virtualization platform. In this case, VMware work, Workstation. So we'll go ahead and note that I copied it and continue booting the virtual machine. I don't know if you guys uh, caught that really quickly, but we had a BIOS option when the virtual machine first booted that gave us the option of entering the BIOS. So this virtual machine, actually like any other virtual machine, has a BIOS and has uh, everything you expect a physical machine to have. So when a operating system, and in this case Windows XP is installed, from an operating per system pers perspective, the operating system is unaware that it's actually installed in a virtual set of hardware. This is called full virtualization. In our previous class, we talked about full virtualization, para-virtualization, and hardware-assisted virtualization. In full virtualization, the entire stack of hardware is replicated and presented to the virtual machine as a virtual machine and para virtualization which is which happens a lot in the mainframe world the virtual os or the guest os is aware that it's a virtual machine running on hardware so we'll take a look at our windows xp machine and see if we can tell the difference uh, from the operating system perspective one of the great advantages of Windows, I'm sorry, of VMware Workstation uh, 7 and 8 and 
probably as, as far as I've been using VMware Workstation is that it's really designed to uh, give a developer, a uh, application tester, anybody who has the need to regularly work in um, a virtual machine, uh, the look and feel of a full desktop. So if we hit the hotkey control alt enter, we'll actually get a full screen of our Windows XP. And as you can see, it's really hard to tell just by looking at this screen uh, that we're in a virtual machine. We'll take a look at the properties of our virtual machine. As you can see, this is a Windows X XP professional machine license. Uh, it tells us the CPU this sign that we're running on a virtual machine, at least from an end user's perspective, you'll probably ever never see a i7 2630QM processor with just one uh, CPU. So if we went to task, if we started our task manager, this is an i7 processor. And if we go to performance, we'll see only one CPU versus the uh, eight that we normally see with this processor the four plus the four hypervisor, hyper threading. So we'll go to hardware and our device manager. And we'll have this general tab up as well. So again, we see that this is one gig of RAM, one uh, physical processor. We go to our processors tab. We see our Intel processor. We go to our uh, network adapter. We have a VMware um, base adapter installed. Uh, system devices, we're gonna see uh, all the typical system devices we see in a physical hardware, piece of hardware with, in addition to that, some VMware specific hardware that mimics the bus controller and uh, host device. Now let's take a look at our physical machine. We'll switch back, go to a command prompt. And our physical machine also has a IP address on that same network, the 134, the 192.134.24 uh, network. We'll find that adapter in a second, I hope. Oh, there we go, 192.168.124.1. Let's go all the way out and make sure we're not confusing the two different environments. So right now the IP address is NATed. And the this machine can get out to the internet just as if uh, I had a firewall connected to a natting firewall connected to this 192.164.24 network and the internet and every machine outside of my workstation would only see the public IP or in this case a, a secondary private IP of my Windows 7 machine. So if I wanted to I could actually go back in and change this from a NAT configuration to a bridge configuration. Go back into my Windows XP machine, do an IP release, then an IP config renew. Now I have an IP address on my physical network. So let's compare that to my workstation. And as you see, my workstation has a dot eight IP address. And if the Windows firewall, if the firewall is not installed on the Windows XP machine, I should be able to ping the Windows XP machine. The firewall is on that machine, but if the firewall wasn't on that machine, 
I could ping that machine. So my network actually sees both IP addresses. My if I went to the logs of my firewall, I'd see IP, I see a MAC address for the dot nineteen machine, and I'd see a, a MAC address for the uh, Windows Seven host. So as you can see, our VMware workstation has completely created a container of hardware, self-contained, self-contained container of hardware. And this environment is completely separate from our physical hardware environment. As you can see, this from a uh, when you when we take a step back from not just a enterprise use case, but even in for a consumer, the ideal of being able to run a completely separate operating system that's self-contained has a lot of appeal. Uh, we gave the use of a Mac user that wanted to use a Windows on their workstation. Uh, that's common. VMware Workstation most definitely isn't the only solution to do that. Parallels is extremely popular on the Mac platform, as is VirtualBox, which is a free application. VMware Workstation most definitely has some advantages that we'll be leveraging throughout the next series of videos. Uh, VMware does an incredibly great job of virtualizing the x64 bit uh, uh, chipset and being able to allow us to run what's called nested, nested virtual machines. So what we'll do in other classes, you'll see that I have a ESXi host, a uh, Hyper-V host. We'll actually run Hyper-V or ESXX or maybe even both inside of VMware Workstation and actually install virtual machines inside of those operating systems. That's one of the big advantages of VMware Workstation 8 and why we use it in our lab and for the www.virtualizegeek.com virtualization scenarios. Again, if you have any uh, further questions, you can visit the work website uh, feel free to comment on this YouTube video and I'll be checking in for comments. Thanks and talk to you next video.